Well, here they are. I haven't done one of these videos in a little while about catching swarms. So this is a nice low swarm just on my trellis for my kiwi plant. So I love to have a tarp handy. So I've got a tarp. I'm going to set it down right here. I've got a swarm box all ready to go and a queen cage. I'm going to try and see if I can locate the queen. And if I can get her inside my little queen cage, I can put that inside the swarm trap. It'll be a much easier transfer for the bees that way. So uh, let's just go ahead and set up. Hopefully this will be a stingless swarm retrieval. All right, so let's get started. This makes it so much easier. Take a tarp with you, just leave it in the truck or car. It makes uh, the shakedown so much easier. They just fall on that and then set your hive up. So, this is the plan. We want to shake them down and make them go in here. And we're going to make that a little bit more appealing for them. So I've got my little, my handy tool pouch now. I'm trying to stay more organized. Got all the stuff I need for most of the stuff I do. So I got a little lemongrass oil. I'm going to put a little dab of that at the entrance. A hive tool just to move the frames around. I've got some queen lure also. If I put a little dab of this on the entrance, it just makes everybody go in smoother. If you don't have this, don't worry. If we can find our queen, uh, we can put her inside. If you can't find your queen, a lot of times if you shake down the swarm, majority votes on just going in and the queen will go in too. So let's just see how it plays out. So a little dab right here. Just a little bit on your fingertip, a little bit of lemongrass oil. Lemongrass oil works good. Lemon pledge is okay too, but this is non-toxic, so I try to stay with the non-toxic stuff. Lemongrass oil. I'll keep a bee brush handy. And I've got my empty lands frames. This is what I start all my bees on. But I just so happen to have some old comb from last year and I saved that. Now I'm going to make this even more appealing for them. I've got a little bit of sugar water I'm going to spray on this. I'm going to put the sugar water on it. And won't that be nice when they go inside and they find there's some sugar water in these cells. That'll just give them an incentive to stay. like that. So all I did was cut that up an old frame of Langstroth equipment and the bees are already checking it out. I spray that right down into the cells. Now I've never done it this way before so it's not like I've done this a hundred times. I've caught swarms like this a lot but I've never had comb sugar water into the cells it just kind of occurred to me so I kind of sometimes make up this stuff as I go but what more reason would a bee want to be inside of a new house without a little housewarming present so we'll just do that for them and that's probably all we need well I got my queen cage ready I'm gonna keep that right here and I'm gonna just see if I can poke around in there a little bit and see if I can find her. All right, put on my eagle eye vision. Sometimes you'll see her just kind of hanging around in here and I just keep this handy. And sometimes you don't see her, so. What I want to happen is I wanna shake them down onto this tarp. And I don't want it blowing in the wind. Well, let's look. And then let's find a good shake spot. Now scout bees are already coming and going to this cluster and they're trying to see if they can find a place to go. So 
So I might just be able to just do a quick shake on the fence, see if they pop down here. So let's see what happens. Hopefully we don't get stung. There they go. All right, now it's the time to watch for the queen. So let's see if we see her walking around. And I want to get them towards my box. Now sometimes the queen will fly right back up there, but she might be here. Now they're all starting to fan right here. They haven't taken to the box yet. A lot of them are down on the ground, on the tarp now. I don't see a queen yet. They're probably flying back up here. The good thing is it's easy to shake them off here. Let me see if I can encourage them to get closer to that entrance. Right there. Now they're going on the box. Oh, that's good. They're going on the box now. I'm actually, uh, I'm going to put all the frames in and close it up. They don't, they like it dark better. We'll open it up if we get our queen, but right now we're just going to close it. We find the queen. We'll close it up. Oh, let's see what they're doing. Not too much yet. They're clumping back on here. I'll see if I can see the queen. It's always good if you find her. Okay, I don't see her, so I'm gonna do another shake. Did she come down? I don't see her here yet. And they're not real convinced about going in just yet. They're all just hanging at the front entrance. Oh, what are you guys up to here, huh? Now they're being decent about it. They're just making a little, little more work for me. The queen is probably flying back up whenever I do that shake. She hasn't fallen in with the group. I don't see an overwhelming majority vote going in yet. Once they make up their minds, it's like a stampede. They are starting to walk that way. There are about, oh, I don't know, 30, 40% of them that are starting to move in the direction of the box. The lemongrass is probably helping. A little bit of queen lure is probably helping. It's kind of windy today though. So let's see. Move some down. Sometimes if I slide them off the box, they start to go and there's some more going in. This is something else that sometimes works really well when they're determined to stay up in an area like they are here. I slide a piece of old comb under them. They like the smell of the comb, 
and they start getting on it. And I hear the queen, she's piping in there. So I think she's gonna make an appearance. That's why they haven't all gone in the box. Now they're all getting excited about being on the comb. Look at how they get on there. And now we can thin the herd. They're all excited about that comb. They're starting to fan and get all on it. I'll start marching on that. Good chance the queen will walk onto it. See if I can scoop some off. Maybe we can find her. All right, so we thin the herd. We've got uh, a lot of the bees convinced this is a good place to be right here, is on this comb. Now what I can do is I can get, just sh gently shake them in front of the entrance of the box, and then I'll bring them back up and see if we can get some more, and we'll get our queen that way. She might be on this side though. We'll give this a good look before we do anything. Let's see. We can see her walking. I don't think she's here yet. Sometimes they get in these little clumps right here. I, I don't see any. One more turn, and then if not, I'll gently bump these bees in front of the in front of the hive. We'll find her. Yeah, I have a feeling she's still in that group. Let's check in front of the hive. in there, I hear her, she's singing away, she's piping. love the smell of their house, so this wax comb will really be attractive for them. You see how they're walking off the branch onto the comb. I just put it right there where it's easy for them to get to. Keep thinning the herd. We'll find that queen in there. She's in there. All right, who's in here? Who's in this group? No queen here. No queen here. All right. Let's bump them again, right in front of the hive. And let's see if we can shake them right onto that. I saw a large bee, but I think it was a drone. It made me do a double take. All right, well, we're still working on her. 
got a lot of bees out front here, but I don't think they're convinced enough to go in yet. Get some more by the entrance here. Now, every time I do that, a lot of them go into the entrance. What we're trying to do is get the majority vote that this is where they need to be. Okay, so there's a little cluster still gathering up here. Let's see if we can thin the herd down a little more and encourage them to come on down. Come on down to that new house we got. Oh, it's shaking a little bit. Did we get her? Yes, we got her. Here she is. She's right here. We want to get her before she flies away. All right. So we caught the queen. So this this will be easy from here on out. All we have to do is put the queen in. Um, I'll I'll probably just hang her in a little queen cage. I'll put her between the frames. I'll show you how I do that. But she's in there. All right, that's very good. I'm gonna keep her right here for the moment. I'll just put her on the ground. And I'm gonna go get a, a queen cage. Oh, you know what, I might have one in my, uh, my handy little pouch. Let me see if I got it. I might have one right here. I was smart enough to remember, I got one. I just so happened to have one. Good. So I, I have a queen cage on a string, and uh, I'm just going to get her from in here into here so I can install her inside between the frames. Let's just get her in. I just let her walk in. She just walked right in. I just open up the, the front of the hair clip a little bit and keep my finger over part of it. So only that much is accessible to the hole and I just put that right there and she walks right in. So what I don't want is I don't want her to fly away. So I need a cork. I don't know if I have a cork. All right, so I don't have a cork, but all I need is a little piece of wax. I'll just break a piece of wax off here. And this will be my cork temporarily. Now, They'll probably chew through that wax, but all I want to do is just get her in. So I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to hang her in between the frames, and they'll all go in. So I, I just tape the string onto the back of the hive. Show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll just set her down gently, take off the cover. I'm gonna split the frames just a little. And I'll hang her in between the frames right here. I'll just tape this on. Everything stays nice and secure that way. Move the frames back together. I'll just bring you around and show you. So here's what I did.
So my, my queen is attached to this string, and all I did was just split the frames. The cage is hanging about that, about that far down from the top bars. So now she's in, and everything's secure. I just want her in there so the rest of the bees will go to this uh, swarm box. And I'll just center up those frames good, put the cover on, and now they'll go in. The bees that are inside will start to fan the queen pheromone out and then bring the other bees down out of the vine. Now I'll just shake off the branch one more time, get that little bitty cluster that's up there. They'll all go in now. Sometimes they still fly up, but they'll get the pheromone signal from here, and they'll all come down. More of them are going this way now. As I shook those bees and they started to fly in the air, they're starting to get the fanning smell from these bees. So a lot of them now are coming this way. There's still gonna be some that go on the branch. In about 20 minutes, they'll all leave that branch and they'll all go in the box. That's kind of a typical swarm retrieval. It's always great when they land on a low-lying branch like this, and it makes it so much easier than getting up on a ladder or having to use a bucket uh, to bring them down. But they're all gonna go in and do their thing, and uh, that's just a easy way to get free bees. So now you can just kind of hang out with your bees. You can take close-up video with your iPhone. I like to do that, and uh, they're all going to go in now that the queen is in here. They're all going to go inside. The bees that are up here, they're abandoning that little bitty branch they were on. They're starting to fly around in the air right around me, and they're all starting to group up right here now because they smell the pheromone from that queen coming out of the hive. It's getting very loud right here. So I didn't have time to go get my good wireless microphone today and put it on because the bees never uh, sent me a text message that this was going to happen today, so I didn't get that. But anyway, um, just be prepared. Have a few of these swarm traps handy. If you didn't hang them all up, that's okay. Keep a couple handy that you can just throw in your truck, and when you see a swarm, all you got to do is put that swarm trap in and go get them. So probably about 20, 30 minutes, all the bees will be inside, and then we can just choose a spot somewhere on our bee yard where we can place them. Now here's the branch where they were hanging out. And you can see there's hardly any bees on there now. They're, they're coming to check. Those are probably returning scouts that were looking for an ideal home. But the home came to them today. We brought it to them and there they go. They're very excited about it. We gave them that little housewarming gift. We sprayed some sugar down in some comb from last year. So when they go up inside to see the queen and get a little drink of sugar water. That, by the way, is all the feeding I do. That's it. It's early enough in the season. We still have almost two full months of honey flow. And they should be able to establish themselves with that amount of time. No need to feed them. What I'm gonna go do next is I've gotta go find a spot. I don't want them in the, 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 the bee yard that's right behind me here. I'm actually starting to space my bees as far apart as I possibly can. And I just so happen to have a lot of room here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and start spacing my colonies much further apart than what you see behind me. In fact, what you see behind me right now is gonna be pretty much phased out as far as my hive spacing goes. Um, if you folks have ever watched Tom Seeley, he's a beekeeper who's really devoted his entire life study to bees. And one of the things that um, uh, makes total sense, if you think about it, Tom made this observation and he did a study where he actually studied bee colonies that were kept close together versus 100 feet apart. The ones that were kept close actually had a very high mortality rate. I think it was, uh, I think it was 100% even. So all the bees died that were kept close together and all the bees that were spaced 100 feet apart had a 50% mortality rate. So 
obviously there's some disease that's being transferred by the colonies being close together. So I'm going to eliminate what you see in the background here very soon. So that's going to be a big change that's going to happen here at uh, Enjoy Beekeeping. But anyway, today was a really cool day. Um, it was a beautiful, gorgeous day. Right now it's about 6 o'clock. Sun's starting to go down and so the bees are settling down. I'm going to go get a level and level out a hive stand and I'm going to set these uh, bees on there get them used to their new location and uh, probably going to put them into a, a regular Lang or not Langstroth what am I saying? Shut my mouth I'm going to put them into a regular Layens hive. I've got some 14 frame Layens hives that I've got built by the shop so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of those. I've been wanting to uh, put a, a colony into one. I've got a bunch of them in 20 frame colonies but I want to use some of these 14s and uh, give them a nice new place to, to live, just like in a tree hollow. Hey, by the way, if you guys are uh, thinking about lands and, and getting into the lands hives, um, let me know because I'm thinking of doing a, uh, a Zoom meeting. And so I, I thought about doing like a podcast, but you know, that's basically a video on YouTube. But I'm thinking about doing a, um, you know, kind of like a question answer. So maybe you're thinking about it, you've seen some videos, um, and sometimes it's hard to get information. If you guys want to have like a, I don't know, an hour long chat or something on Zoom, uh, send me an email, would you? Uh, that's enjoybeekeeping at gmail.com. Let me know if that's something you guys want to do, and I'll go ahead and I'll set it up. You guys can fire out some questions because I've been doing this now for, for a little bit here, and I'll tell you what, I love it. And there's nothing that's going to make me go back to the traditional hives, uh, like the Langstroth hives. Uh, the land system is so much more advantageous. I know I probably sound like a broken record, right? I, I say it all the time, but I, I just cannot, um, you know, I would be doing you a disservice by telling you otherwise. So I want you to go ahead and think about some questions that you might have. If you're thinking about jumping into lands hives, let me know and I'll help you any way I can, all right? So here they are. I got them on their stand all set up. Everything's level now. It took only uh, five minutes to level it. Always make sure you level your hive. It's really easy to do and it really does only take just a few minutes. So this is gonna be their permanent spot right here. Now I'm gonna let them have the nuke for as long as it takes them to build up the six frames that are in it. That's all that fit in there, six frames. And once they've built up, you know, halfway decent, they look like they're doing good, I'm gonna move them into a 14 frame lay lay-ins hive with the thick um, two by 10 walls. So that's what they're going in next. That'll be their future home. But I want them to get used to being on this site that you see right here. And once they're used to coming here, all we gotta do is just switch out the hive. So maybe we can shoot a video on that next time. So this is what I call a level 10 on the beekeeping fun meter. So I hope that you're having a fun beekeeping season already in 2021. So until next time, enjoy beekeeping friends.